Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about shaders and game maker again. Last time I did one of these, we were doing grayscale shaders and game maker, both the, uh, the easy straightforward way and the way that is a little bit more robust accounting for luma values. And today I'm going to be taking that, maybe not a step, but maybe a step and a half farther and talking about uh, sapia color grading. So sapia, for those of you who don't know, is this orangey brown color right here. It is often seen in things like uh, old timey uh, last century photographs because the uh, the chemicals used in such photographs uh, tended to turn to approximately this color uh, when um over time when exposed to light and stuff and a lot of times if you want to do a sort of like old film grain effect to a picture or a video it will involve uh, tinting the image to uh, to this color and uh, this is the hex code if you want it we are going to be uh, we are going to be talking about implementing something like this in a shader today. So before I do anything else, uh, as I feel like I'm going to be doing a lot in uh, shader videos going forward, uh, Game Maker does have this fancy, uh, this fancy uh, filter effect layer uh, feature. And one of them is a, a colorize effect, and you can indeed use that to colorize a layer to a um, whatever color that you give it. And the way that uh, this particular effect is applied, um, the final color is calculated somewhat differently from what I'm going to be doing. But if you are just looking for a quick and dirty effect in a hurry and you just uh, would rather plop down one of these um, filter effects in a room on top of whatever you want to draw, this is probably the way to go. Uh, it's probably good enough for a simple effect, but if you need something that is a little bit more fine-tuned or if you need something that is a um, maybe combined with some other effects in a single shader, or if you're just a weirdo like me who likes to know how the sausage is made, uh, then we shall, uh, we shall go over all of that in this video. So I'm going to delete that layer so that it's not getting in my way later. Uh, I have, I'm going to be applying these effects to basically everything in screen space. So I'm going to be drawing the application surface separately. And when I do that, I'm going to be setting a shader set SHD. I'm going to call it SHD underscore sapia. And then when we're done, shader reset. And we are going to go and create the shader. So let me just control D duplicate the grayscale shader. We're going to be using this as a springboard SHD sapia. And I can, uh, I can open this up and I'm just going to, as is tradition now, I guess, ignore the vertex shader. It hurts to say that because I like, I do like 3d stuff, but for these, uh, simple shader image effects videos, I'm going to just ignore the vertex shader. And we're going to uh, we're going to look at some of the code that we've already written, and we're going to write some code that's similar. It's not going to be like just the same as this, but the general idea is going to be the same. So when we're doing grayscale, we got the uh, the luma value of each uh, pixel, the uh, the relative brightness of each pixel, by uh, using the dot product of the original color against um, some um, some weights. And then we are going to use that luma value as just the amount of gray in the final color. And then if you want to do a partial grayscale amount, you can do a uh, do a little linear interpolation from the original color to the final color. Um, Sapia is going to look something like that. So first, let me declare a vector three. I'm going to call it Sapia color. You can either just declare this value and be done with it, or you can initialize it to a vector three of of zero. Uh, the shader compiler will, whenever you declare a variable like this, it will automatically populate its field with zero. Uh, unlike GameMaker, which will just say this variable exists even though it doesn't contain anything yet. Uh, static languages often let you do this because when you declare a variable, it, um, memory for it is allocated. Hey. And then instead of performing, um, instead of performing one dot product of the original colors, red, green, and blue values against something, uh, I'm going to perform three. So, sapia color dot red is going to be equal to the dot product of original original color dot RGB against a vector three containing and I'm going to spit out a bunch of magic numbers in a row and I'll kind of explain them later uh, 0 0.393 0 0.769 0 and then I'm just gonna copy this half of a line of code because we're gonna be gonna be typing out typing it out a few times. Uh, Sapia color green is going to be equal to the dot product of the original colors red, green, and blue against a vector three containing 0 0.349, 0 0.686, and 0 0.168. Okay, 
And sepia colors, um, sepia colors blue is going to be equal to the dot product against a vector three containing 0 0.272, 0 0.534, and 0 0.131. So this is going to, uh, in the end, when we're done with all this, contain the um, the amount of like brownish orange sepia that we want to assign it to GL frag color dot RGB. And then I uh, can't forget the alpha gl frag color dot alpha is going to be equal to original color dot alpha. And when we run the game now, we should have something that looks uh, more or less like a sapia color burn effect. Okay. Or uh, color burn is a different a different thing in like image processing. That's a one of Photoshop's blood modes. A color we we've converted the color to a, a sapia palette, and it's a, it's a little on the light side. Maybe more so than a lot of old photographs because the original image is a little bit on the light side. Um, the original, uh, like what you would see in the game, is a little bit on the light side. Can I get rid of these? Uh, can I get rid of these colored ducklings on the screen? I think I can do that. I'm just gonna uh, just gonna get rid of those colored ducklings. They're a little distracting. So that's Sapia. Uh, my name is Dragonite. I hope you all enjoyed that and I will see you all later, except not quite. Uh, there's a little bit more. So if you're a fan of Matrix Match for some reason, you might look at these three lines of code and say that this looks an awful lot like what happens when you just multiply a vector by a matrix um, written out the long way. And that is actually exactly what's happening here. Uh, so we have the same value, so the same original color to RBG, RGB being multiplied, well, dot producted against three vectors. And uh, the three results of that are just being fed into the components of, a, uh, of an output vector. And that is exactly what happens when you do a matrix multiplication the long way. You're just doing the dot product of the input vector against uh, each of the rows in the matrix and you're uh, feeding that into the components of the output vector. And if you wanted to make this code a little bit more concise, and I don't believe this would really change performance any, I don't really believe this would make your code faster in any meaningful way, but maybe to allow you to not have to write out quite as much code by hand and maybe to, uh, to make your code look a little bit more uh, similar to what's happening mathematically here. Uh, we can define a mat three. So this is gonna construct a three by three matrix. I can call it uh, sapia matrix. And this is going to be assigned to a three by three matrix. This is gonna have some, uh, some values fed into it and uh, I could type these all out again, or I could just uh, copy paste and reformat, um, which might be a little bit easier. Like this. So this is gonna be our, uh, our three by three matrix on the top, uh, 0 0.393, 0 0.769, 0 0.189, in the middle 0 0.349, 0 0.686, 0 0.168, on the bottom 0 0.272, 0 0.534, 0 0.131. I will talk a little bit more about these numbers later, but uh, for now we can take this matrix, we can multiply original, uh, we can say sapia color is gonna be original color to RGB, and we can multiply that by SEPIA matrix. And we can do away with the rest of this, and we can say uh, sapia color is going to be the original color to RGB multiplied by this matrix. And that's going to give us a vector three with the, um, the same components as we had when we did it the long way. Uh, again, when you multiply a vector three by a matrix, that is the output that you get. And we have ourselves a uh, sapia toned um, duckling game overworld thing here. All right, that's great. It's considerably less code. Uh, all we really have are nine numbers in a matrix multiply as opposed to, uh, to all the things we had before. So there's one more thing that I will talk about before I get into a little bit about uh, exactly what these numbers are. And the same way that we uh, had a uh, had a uniform in the grayscale shader controlling the grayscale amount, uh, you can have just a partial uh, like amount to the amount of the uh, the sapia color. Uh, so if I wanted to uh, have, for example, half sapia color, I could do a little lerp uh, or in GLSL parlance mix from the original color to the sapia color and a, um, a factor of 0 0.5. And this will give us a oh, original color dot RGB uh, to the sapia color with a factor of 0 0.5. And this would give us like halfway there. So we can see that we've got a little bit of a little bit of old film effects here. 
Uh, maybe this is a photograph from like the, uh, I don't know, the 40s or something that hasn't had time to properly burn or something like that. I don't remember exactly how, um, like, photographic weathering happens. I had a teacher in high school who was really into that kind of thing, but those days were a long time ago now. Anyway, we could control this with a uniform, so we're going to have uniform flow. I'm going to call it instead of grayscale amount, sapia amount. And we can feed this into the uh, into the mix function, into the linear interpolation, and we can use that. Uh, if we don't specify what that uniform is, it will give us a, a value of just zero. But uh, shader set um, set uniform float shader get uniform shader sapia um, you the name of the uniform and the value can be, we can feed this in as a uniform. We can make it one for 100%, zero for the original color. Um, I guess I'll do what I had with the grayscale shader and write a little little sine wave to make it bounce back and forth, something like that. And this will make the sapia amount bounce back and forth between zero uh, percent and 100%. All right, that's, uh, that's a little bit on the satisfying side. So. I, uh, I spent a lot of time on the internet in the last few days trying to figure out exactly where these numbers came from. And technically I found out where they came from, but I didn't really find out anything really useful about them. Uh, there is a page on one of the very old, um, I think it was like a DirectX FAQ or a .NET FAQ or something on Microsoft's um, like developer notes section of their website. And that seems to be the oldest reference to these nine individual floating point numbers that I could find. And if I can dig up the page again, I'll throw it on the screen. But the only thing it really said about them was that you would feed these three values into a matrix and multiply the original color by that matrix to get a sapia color. It didn't really say how they derived them. I, uh, I asked around and the consensus seems to be that Microsoft just like picked values until they found something that looked good. If you were to, if you were to fill around with these numbers a little bit, and if you were to do the grayscale thing where you multiply each of these three vectors by the uh, like the luma factor from the grayscale shader, and if you were to sign each of those values into the red, green, and blue um, channels of just a color and represent that as a color, uh, you would get something that looks like this. The hex code is going to be like 150, 134, 105. And it's still a brownish orange, but it's a, it's a much brighter brownish orange. It's Anyway, as far as I could tell, the trail seemed to go cold there. And if the software engineers at Microsoft did anything beyond just picking numbers and feeding them into this matrix until they found something that looked good, I could not figure out what it was. Um, if you were to essentially dot product each of these against white or just add these up row by row, uh, you would get this number. And this is what you would get if you uh, multiplied C underscore white by the Sapia matrix. And the, uh, the result would be like a very, very close to white, not quite white yellow color. Unfortunately, this doesn't really help us if we want to do our own color grading. Uh, without knowing exactly how uh, the, uh, the people at Microsoft came up with these numbers, I wouldn't want to say anything committal one way or the other about what you would do if you wanted to, um, instead of blending your, uh, your color to something that's like orangey brown, if you wanted to blend it to something that was another color like red or bluish or something like that. But you can always just mess around and find out. You can always use the built-in filter effects in the Game Maker Room Editor. Uh, I'll probably talk about exactly how this um, tints, tints the screen to a color later on. Uh, it's a little more complicated, so I didn't want to do it now. When you make a video on uh, sapia toning, people tend to expect the, uh, the sapia matrix to come into play instead of the other strategy that the room editor uses. So I'm going to leave it off here. Um, this has been how to write a, a sapia uh, color shader and game maker. I hope no one is too disappointed by my lack of a, uh, a thorough explanation as to where this matrix came from. If anyone has any theories as to how these numbers were derived, f feel free to share them in the comments, but uh, the consensus certainly seems to be that Microsoft just pulled them out of thin air, so um, until other evidence emerges, I'm just going to go with that. If there are any other um, filter effects or visual effects that you want to see how they are implemented, uh, whether that's something that's built into the Game Maker Room Editor filter uh, list or whether it's some other effect from somewhere else, uh, let me know. No promises that I'll get to it quickly, but if you have any fun ideas, I'll certainly put it on the list for, uh, for future consideration. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description.
I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, look for links to that in all the usual places as well. You could see some fun things like your name in the credits at the end of every video, and about once a month I post a preview of my future plans, so if any of that appeals to you and you wanted to pledge, I would definitely appreciate it. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Kiexi, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.